Good day to you all, uh, Dave, CTO at DVS. Welcome to another how-to video. Today, I'm gonna run through how to use a Hike Vision IP camera with an SD card to give you time-lapse video recording. It's quite an easy thing to do. All of the cameras that allow us, the IP cameras that do have an SD card, which is most of the modern ones now, allow us to put an SD card in there. And within the IP camera uh, webpage, allows us to set the capture time up and then download those images and use it for time lapse. Really popular for building and construction sites, uh, sporting events, things like that, um, you know, music and festivals. I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly. So I'm just gonna take my mouse here and log in to my camera. So first things first, I've installed the SD card. I'm not gonna show you that because every camera is slightly different. This is a 4K Buller camera that's fitted on the external of our building. Looking at our car park. First thing I do is go to configuration. I put a 32 gigabyte uh, SD card in there. A lot of the modern cameras now support the 120 or even the 256. So we go to storage on the left hand side. First thing is storage management. We'll see under there, the cards in there, 32 gigabyte, it's uninitialized. So first thing we'll do is format that card. Yes, this can take, uh, depend on the size of the card and the card manufacturer, it can take a little bit of time. We can just watch that. Wait for this to catch up. Have a little slurp of my coffee while we're waiting. Hope everything's been good with you guys anyway. Thanks for the support. And the, and the sub subscriptions we're now seeing and the questions we get asked. It's really nice to see the feedback. It's like watching paint dry. There we go, so that's now finished. So now we're back to normal. So what we can do, so that's normal, we're all set with that. And we can set the percentage of the picture there and the percentage of the record there. So if you need to split it up where the SD card's doing um, recording and picture snapshotting, we can set that up so it's 25% allocated to picture only and 75% for video, or you can mix and match that uh, figure to make the 100%. So it depends on the type of uh, application you're using the camera for. So we've got the network hard drive, so we can point that to a NAS device, a memory card detection. So the remaining lifespan, this is like a health detection, so in the, the latest firmwares on the modern cameras, we've got the memory card detection, allows us to see the remaining lifespan and the health status is normal. You've got the read, write, lock off. The read, write, lock off only works on certain versions of the Hike Vision SD card, doesn't work on non-Hike Vision SD cards. Then arm and schedule and linkage methods. But we'll go back to hard drive management to say our card is normal and that's exactly how I want it. The next step we need to do is if we go into the schedule settings, now we've got it for um, event setting. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set mine to continuous. So to in this time, scale, in this time um, map here, what we can do is if it's a construction site and you only wanna take images when the construction site is open and not through the night. So you're not taking images through the night um, for no reason when it's dark and you're not really going to get any usable images what we can do is delete these change it to continual and then we'll put it from say six in the morning through till six at night copy using the copy button to all days click on ok and click save so during this active time period continually when i set in the next part that's my record schedule so continually i'm recording to my sd card uh, during that time period, like I say, if it's a construction site and, you, and it's dark and you don't get any usable stuff, then we don't need it for out there. But you can put it to 24-7 and you can use motion, motion alarm or event, which is like a, an alarm input, say a PIR. So I'm going to leave it uh, as if it was a, my construction site between these times here. Uh, so we've got recording on the edge because you would have an NVR typically or DVR um, hybrid solution going through to a, a, a remote uh, monitoring station. So under capture, what we will do then is we can also do the same here. So for continue, we'll delete the, cont uh, leave it for the capture schedule. We'll follow the record schedule on the SD card. So I'm going to put it from six in the morning through till six at night. Copy all and OK and save that. And then under the capture parameters, so we've got the record and the capture both set for the ti same time scales. They can be very different, but this is just for 
um, set up and demonstration purposes. So under the capture parameters, we've got timing and event-based. Now event-based is motion, alarm input, VCA, um, anything this class is an event that would trigger the snapshot there. We're interested in timing. So we're going to enable the timing snapshot and we're going to say JPEG. You can only select JPEG and we can select the resolution and that follows the resolution that the camera is set at. Now this is a 4K camera, so we've got the 4K resolution. It's following the setting that the camera is set up under video and audio. The quality is set to high and the interval can be set at 1000 milliseconds. So you've got seconds, minutes, hour and days. So what you could do is say take one every hour between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. That would give you a number of snapshots through the day that when you can download them and compile them would give you like a uh, the, the, the time lapse video. Now one an hour might be too often or too little. So what we can say is for test purposes, I don't have the luxury of leaving it for days and days on end. So I'm going to say every second, one every second, uh, maybe every five seconds. We'll take a snapshot on my build. Then I click save. So what that will do now is every five seconds, that will take a snapshot and store it within the SD card. So. If I just left that now for a period of say 30 seconds and go into the picture, we should see a number of um, images in there which we can download and then put them into a separate file. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna leave it run for a couple of minutes. So through the magic of uh, Hollywood, you're gonna see me stop and then we'll pick it up in a couple of minutes time. So give, give me a little bit of time and then we'll come back to you. Okay, welcome back. As I said, we've um, given a little bit of time now. So you'll see on different cameras, different firmwares, there's a little bit of difference in how you get that file back. But on the latest firmware on the G1 platform, we've got a, an option called picture on the web browser. You can use IMS 4200 to download these images as well. But if I go into the picture, and under continuous, we've got the time and date, but you'd set it from the start time of when the camera started uh, taking these snapshots. We've only just done it today. So we'll click search. And there'll be quite a lot of files there. As you can see there, there's a file for every five seconds that we've done. So it's 92 files all together. What we'll do is we'll download all of these. Click download. There are two meg each file, so it might take a little bit of time. Tells you the progress up there and it'll just keep going through as each one downloads. Now, if you've got one an hour um, or one a day, perhaps, then it's not so many. I've done one every five seconds, so it's going to be quite a lot. You wouldn't typically do one every five seconds on a construction site or a project of that nature. It would just be far too many clips. I suggest one an hour is probably about right. So we'll let that download. Hopefully we'll see you all at IFSAC as well, so we'll be there. Come along, say hello, meet the guys, meet the team, ask questions, have a beer with us. So what we'll do, we've got quite a few there. So we'll say stop downloading now. So we've got quite, quite a few there that we can use just to uh, show you how this would work in a real life application. What this will do then is all of the ones that have downloaded, it'll put them into the web file on the PC itself. So I've already got the folder open. So if I, there we go, the folder, that's the default folder that they'll all save into. So they're just JPEG images, different ways you can use it. Windows Movie Maker was very good at making time-lapse movies. That's no longer available, but if you've still got it, very simple to use. I use another program, um, which is called uh, VideoPad by NCH. This seems to be um, quite easy to use, quite intuitive. Again, if I copy all of these, and copy and put them into there. It will load them all into this software. Again, we don't support this kind of software. This is just something, so I'm showing you end to end, you know, what the benefits of using the time-lapse video would be. 
and again this software is made by someone completely different and there are many available and many of them are um, very good this is just my preferred one so don't shoot the messenger so all the files will be loaded in there and then you've got your sequence and then of all the all the images and then what you can do then is drag all these into the actual video pane there so you can add all of these into place on the sequence that's that you can just add them into this then uh, copy and paste into there and then you will have if you just drag them down there look and then you just keep dragging them in And you can make up sequences, video tracks, put them in any order you want. And then as you uh, you can put audio tracks on there. Say this is not something we support as a company or you know as a manufacturer, but this is just a, a nice easy way how to show you how to make an actual time lapse video. Say there's many out there. Hope it's a benefit. Um, if you've got any questions, again please ask. Thanks again for all your help and support. Remember keep uh, sharing, keep uh, signing up to the YouTube channel so you get notified when these go live. Any suggestions, always welcome. And again, have a great day. I'm just trying to find the stop button ready in preparation. Uh, and I can't find it. There we go. It's right by there. So have a great day. See you next week for the next how-to video. Thank you for watching.